Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Office Hours with myself, Father Stu Wilson Smith, uh, here at the St. Thomas More Newman Center, uh, the Catholic Campus Ministry for the Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. As you can see, I was still sipping the tea from last week. It's not the same tea from last week. I mean, it is the same tea, but not substantially the same, literally the same cup. I am not 100% yet. So if there's a, a few intermittent coughs throughout the uh, proceedings here, uh, the duration of this broadcast, I, I apologize in advance. Doing my best. I just feel a little, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, it's persistent. So uh, a lot going on this week. We had All Saints Day on Wednesday. We had All Souls Day on Thursday. Uh, also known as the commemoration of the faithful departed. And uh, I got to celebrate Mass uh, both both days at the hospital and also at the Newman Center, the hospital at 1230 and the Newman Center at 530. And so it was nice to have a, a different experience of, of both places. I got to say, I think I preached entirely different homilies both times. Some people want to, you know, are, are curious why you would, you would do that, wouldn't it? It'd be easy to write one homily. Most times, yeah, I think, you know, you might have a similar theme or, or message. But sometimes, you know, man, like the, the spirit moves in different ways. And also, if you're speaking to a, a very different congregation that may be in one set of circumstances at the hospital, you have both people who are suffering and sick, and um, but you also have people who work in healthcare. And so you may, sometimes there's like things in particular that, the, you know, the spirit may want to say to them. And then you come here and it's a more general congregation and or or maybe more students or Catholic campus ministry. So you, you just kind of adjust and make do. Now, some years ago, I never would have, I, I have no capability to do that. Not necessarily because I couldn't do it because I'd be too afraid to just because like, you know, you think it used to take me just so many hours upon hours to, to make a homily and it still does take me a long time. But um Hopefully being more open to the spirit has helped me along in that sense. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, you know, just because I preach two different homilies doesn't mean any of them were good. So anyway, pardon again, the sip of tea. Just keeping it casual. Hope you don't mind. What I want to do uh, today is just a little bit of roundup or wrap up or uh, final thoughts, whatever you want to call it, of these, of these two days. All Saints on Wednesday, All Souls on Thursday. There, I mean, it, it was very different for me this year. I think part of that may have been it was my first year experiencing these days from the perspective of, of a priest and from a presider, you know, because it, it just kind of forced me to think, um, I don't know, I, I, it's not that I hadn't thought deeply about these things, but um, saying the words in the Missal and the prayers, I think, helped me get my mind a little more around what is the church actually saying and actually believe about these days. One of the insights I had is, you know, these commemorations that we have or, or these big celebrations of something like All Saints and All Souls, when we do that, we don't just do it for the sake of celebrating those people, which it, it is, you know, a celebration of these people. But it's like with the intent and the hope that in some way we're, we're, we can participate in what they participate in, that we can be uh, inspired by, by the example that, that they put forward to us. Um, so I, I think it's just important to become important to me not to see them as, as just kind of two days we picked off the calendar and said, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's use these two days to celebrate. No, it's like really a hope that we would be inspired by some way that we would enter into the mystery of it as fully as possible. I don't know, something like that. So on Wednesday, uh, uh for the 530 mass, I mean, I preached something, but I think the thing I was trying to get at in terms of how we can participate in All Saints Day and not just, um, you know, beyond the sense of saying, oh, we have so many awesome saints, which we do. But like, what does that mean for us? And one of the things I was getting at is, is, is I'm really struck by how the church and the sacraments of the church are set up in such a way, and this was my provocative statement, they're set up in such a way to, to permit our failure, or they're set up for our failure, <laughs> which sounds bad. But what I mean is, is they're actually set up for our persistence. You know, that is to say the sacraments are, are tend to be sacraments of, of like renewal, things that re-strengthen you um, when we're weakened or we fall into sin or uh, whatever it is. From baptism, um, through Eucharist, 
uh, Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word. My soul shall be healed. You know, that sense of I'm healed now and I can, I can start again, uh, in reconciliation, you receive absolution and, you know, hopefully we'll end with something like go in peace or whatever. And it's like at that moment, uh, you can start again. And so, you know, when we look at the saints, one of the things we should be inspired by is not just like their example of, of moral greatness, which is something inspiring, but um, that they achieved holiness by engaging in, in the persistence, in the pursuit of it, um, by kind of falling down and getting back up on the saddle and giving it another shot. And really the church and her sacraments are just sort of constituted in such a way to, to allow us to do that. And so that's what makes a saint is time and persistence um, to grow in holiness. So uh, that was an interesting day to, to kind of reflect on. All Souls Day, man, um, it was really quite a number of people approached me with, with various, you know, a number of really moving stories about what All Souls Day um, has meant to them and means to them, both because of like the faithful departed in their life, the, the people that they love who are, who are gone to God. And it's like, how do they... And, and what this day means for them I was very, very, very moved by that. And uh, the first thing that came to my mind, and this may see, this will seem random at first. Uh, pardon me, sir. Once again, I was thinking of that movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Random, I know. Um, I think it was written by it was a Charlie Kaufman. Anyway, it was is that Jim Carrey movie, and. But it's like, it's got a surrealist kind of bend. It's futuristic in some ways. Um, you know, this couple that are in a, a beautiful, loving relationship and really happy. And um, they have this horrible, you know, falling out, this argument. The relationship seems to be on towards a demise. And so she um, has her memory erased of him and of the whole relationship. He finds this out and then does the same thing. And so it's like it, it never happened. And I was thinking about that, like in terms of the context of grief and mourning, like why is there not, why is it we, why have we not evolved to like stop loving people when they're gone? Why, why does our love for someone outlive, uh, out survive even the length of life of that, of that person? And also why does our, why do our memories still say so strong, even though there's a sense in which it would be easier if that wasn't the case. You know, like, why don't we go looking or why don't we go trying to invent some machine that would make life easier because you could just, you know, act like it, it never happened. And uh, so I thought about that. And, you know, even spiritually, like, is there not a way the soul could evolve to, to, to manage that better? And I, I was thinking of why God would allow that or want it to be that way, because it can be very painful, right, to, to mourn and to grieve. And one of the things I was thinking about is just that it's like there's a sense in which love and memory allow us to stay connected to those who are departed. And that's important for our, for our Catholic faith because we believe in a communion of saints. So we believe we are connected. And, and so it's right and just and appropriate that um, we still have that desire and that inclination um, to, to keep people alive through our, our memory of them, through the ways that we recall their lives and heart and mind, and through the way that we still continue to love them. So I think if they are, you know, they are alive and in some way more alive than we are, they're alive in and with God, then our responsibility to them, Jesus' command still holds, love one another as I have loved you. And within the context of the communion of saints on that All Souls Day, um, we have a chance to... Um, to love that person by calling them to mind, bringing to their memory, you know, that comes about in different ways. And some of them are really funny. You know, we think of, uh, I think of Paulus who have passed. And one of the first things we do sometimes is do an impression of them or say they used to, you know, uh, say this kind of thing in the common room, or they had this uniqueness about their presiding style, you know, so it's like calling them to mind and heart and you love them by praying for them. Um, by praying for them and, and also by asking for them to pray for us. So I think that's a reason why, even in the midst of, of the pain of it, why, why love and memory um, for these people that we cherish in our lives um, continue and, and perdure um, even after they're gone. And it's the same for us after we're gone. Um, it keeps us connected because we are connected. 
So I don't know if that's too deep and abstract or whatever. I hopefully something in there made sense. And it's something I'm still thinking about and maybe, and this is the thing, like I said, next year I may end up preaching something entirely different, but this is what has been on my mind. So I'll leave you with that for today. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, you can put them here in the comment box, or as usual, you can email me at swilsonsmith at buckeyecatholic.org. I'll put my email address up, or you can always tweet me at swilsonsmith. I like to be uh, tweeted. Um, uh, it's just a fun medium. What can I tell you? All right, that's it, gang. Hopefully next week I'll be uh, a little bit in better health. We'll see. God bless you all. Bye.